My name's Jane Galvin. I'm a clinical researcher with the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. I'm doing my PhD at the moment on the use of virtual reality to improve hand and arm function for kids who've had acquired brain injuries. I'm also a clinician, senior OT clinician within the rehab service here at the Royal Children's. So I work with children who have movement disorders. The kids that I see predominantly are affected by stroke or traumatic brain injury or some other illness or injury to the brain. We also see children who've had cerebral palsy and who come to see us for um, rehabilitation interventions to improve their hand and arm function. I guess what we see is that kids often need to spend a lot of time having therapy and sometimes that's not terribly engaging. So we're looking for new ways to engage them in therapy and to encourage them to complete rehab programs. And where we've come up with some ideas is to work with a technology company to think about how can we create games that actually get the kids to do the movements that we want them to do in therapy to improve their function. The first step of what we're working on at the moment is using technology to get really good baseline assessments of children. So we're using new 3D camera technology to be able to get dynamic movement analysis of upper limbs that's going to help us hopefully have really strong and accurate baseline measurements so that when we've done interventions we can tell whether what we've done actually made a difference. Based on the current research what we know is that the more you do an activity the better you improve your function. We know that's true for children with neurological disorders. One of the things we also know about technology is that kids love computer games and I think anybody who's seen a kid engage with an iPad or an iPhone or the Wii or any of the other commercially available systems out there knows that kids really enjoy playing the game. So our idea was to be able to match the rehab specific interventions with the technology that we know is engaging to kids because if we link the practice with the technology, if we can get kids to be doing something two or three times every day rather than once or twice a week, the theory is that we're going to be able to help improve their movement more quickly and with better long-term follow-up. So we had identified that gap partly out of the research I'm doing for my PhD and we're working with a local company to try and find something that's really engaging but also has the ability to up and downgrade depending on what the child's movement is. I think one of the problems with current technologies that are around is that off-the-shelf things don't always work for kids with disabilities. They can't always use it, they can't interact with it because things move too quickly or the controllers that you need to do require movements that the kids aren't actually able to do. So we identified that gap. There's also at the other end of the market there's things that are made specifically for rehab but sometimes they've got really good ideas about the rehab but they don't have great games or they've got five or six games so kids get pretty bored of it pretty quickly. So our idea is to kind of bring the rehab part together and the gaming part together to make something that's going to work for kids and be engaging but also have the ability to up and downgrade to meet whatever is their particular goal. I guess the convergence between therapy and technology is how we bring this all together. I think in the gaming systems that are out there that are used in rehab at the moment, they're very separate things. There's rehab technologies and then there's gaming technologies and our convergence is pulling them together to make a product that's specific for paediatric rehab but hopefully also engaging for other kids out in the world as well. I think using new technologies gives us an opportunity to bring those all together and to really converge into a nice package that works for kids and families. Um, what we're hoping to achieve is better long-term outcomes, so we're hoping that children will be able to throw and write and catch and play better through having better technologies and better understanding of their movement and of their rehab needs. I think we have some really high-tech 3D camera technology that's really changed the way we think about working with movement disorders, particularly of gait and of mobility. We don't have similar technologies at the moment that work for understanding movement of upper limbs. So we see this as a really big step forward of being able to really understand how do all the joints of an arm move together. I think if we can understand that, we'll be able to better able to figure out what are the good interventions that work and better able to assess whether what we're doing actually is making a difference. And I think that that covers the, the whole range from um, OT therapies through to surgeries through to any interventions for hands and arms. So I think in the partnership that we have at the moment we're obviously bringing the clinical skills and expertise and experience and our knowledge of working with children with movement disorders through the age span and the technology company we're working with are absolutely bringing the technology and the skills about writing the programs and writing the algorithms that make what we want to do actually work. I certainly have absolutely no skills whatsoever in computer programming but that's what they're bringing to it. So I think having the clinical and having the technology and having that all converge into a process and a program that's going to hopefully benefit everybody. That's what we're doing. 
Recently, the product that we've developed was nominated to present at a um, technical conference in Silicon Valley. So Health 2.0 brings together developers and people interested in how technology interfaces with health. Um, it's a particularly a US-based thing, but people um, send in their ideas and then the top 10 ideas got nominated to present within the conference. We were chosen to be one of those and so based on a three minute presentation of what we're doing, our product was chosen as the winner. So hopefully that's going to lead to more opportunities to continue developing it, but I guess it shows that there's a lot of interest in the US and more broadly about how health and technology interface and the convergence of those things is really important and I guess it, it supports our partnership so far with technology companies and working together to develop really interesting and innovative solutions.